is so, so much of vacation photography to me is about shooting color. And I, we're here in Costa Rica, it is, there is color everywhere. It's, it's, it, there's so much color to me, it's almost distracting. So what I'm gonna do is just try to find big blocks of solid color and shoot them, meter right for that color and see what I get. So it's Sunday afternoon, we're here in San Jose, it's a pedestrian street, lots going on, lots of color, lots of excitement, lots of traffic, all that stuff, so there is just really so much to shoot. I'm just going to turn around, knock a few shots out this way, I'm going to go back, knock a few shots out this way, raise my camera a bit, and I am really pretty good to go there. Whoa. Ah, oh, can I take a shot of you here? Look at this guy. Oh, look at this guy. Hold on. To shoot this police truck you know as a general rule uh, you don't really want to shoot police police vehicles uh, without their permission I like I like this white police truck probably in front of the uh, the station here so I'm gonna sneak off a shot yeah I like love this church here but the first thing uh, it's not lit right uh, you can see that the front is all completely in the shade so let's go find a spot over here where the light is hitting the side of the church see if we can't get a better angle on it the sun is coming from this way so it's strongly lit just on this facade really pretty I'm gonna expose for the brighter part of this facade and uh, it looks really nice it's a it's kind of a it's a vertical shot so strong up and down lines a lot of times when you're shooting travel photography like this you don't want to get too close and you don't want to be looking too much up but eh, you know we're pressed for time we got to be on the run so I think it's good enough let's go same shot a little wider uh, get more context to the thing. That's what's cool about the phone. I can just bring it in and out of bars, no problem. That's really nice. I'm gonna stay in the same locked exposure position that I was there because it's the same light. I don't really have to change it. So I'm gonna shoot a couple like that. Move that camera over here a little bit. Shoot like that, boom, we got it. You know, without any uh, exposure adjustments, it's probably going to be okay. Uh, but it's not a dis what I would call a discriminating exposure. So I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to lock my exposure right on this white over here. Watch me. So I lock my exposure on the white, which is the brightest part of the frame. And now I'm going to come back and shoot it. So to make sure that that white doesn't really blow out. I mean, this is a basic fruit stand, it's fantastic. And all of this stuff is pretty much in the shade, so we can just have our way. We can expose for whatever is there, focus on it, go. Just shooting textures. Uh, you see me shooting, going by just kind of random color uh, because I like it. And I'll add that to my texture library in case I want to use those textures to blend or composite with another photograph. Lots of bright sunlight, 
iPhone doesn't do well in that kind of split lighting, so I'm exposing for the bright part of my frame and letting the shadows fall where they may. I'm just a crazy, crazy, crazy uh, about finding reflections and things. And this uh, maroon tile has this beautiful yellow facade in it. So I'm going to try to expose for it. I'm going to lock that exposure. I'm going to come back and shoot it. That looks really pretty nice. And using Camera Plus, I'm going to compensate it down a little bit. A lot of times in taking vacation photos, it's really about the detail. You can see the, the craftsmanship that went into carving up this door. That is absolutely stunning. The bonus for us is that it's in the shade, so it's easy to shoot. You, know, you always want to shoot those roads, street scenes, and avenues, and alleyways to give that those vacation shots a sense of context. A lot of times when you see a, a structure, in this case a little small church, uh, we can just shoot it without anything in the uh, portrait mode. But I like to frame it. I like to give it some sense of scale. So that we just back up a little bit, include this blue and this iron gate in the shot to help frame the church. And it's pretty nice. Can I get a, can I get a photo of you? Um, I, you look cool, so I'm... Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you say right. so. Yeah, I do say so. You got that look to you. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. You know, what's really amazing is that we just came down this way, this pedestrian street. Now we're walking back. When you reverse your angle sometimes in vacation or travel or what I'd call world photography, it makes all the difference in the world. Your senses about what you see are incredible. We just came down this way. I thought, now I got it. Now we're walking this way, and I'm seeing tons more than when I was walking this way. Check it out. Oh, let me take a photo of you two. Oh, fantastico. Fantastico. You know, the, the vacation photo experience is, there's so much. It's, yeah, church coming out here, it's, it's food, it's structure, it's architecture, uh, it's alleyways, it's streets, it's local color, traditions, ceremonies. It is all that stuff all wound up into a big elastic ball. That's what makes memorable travel photography with your iPhone so incredible inspiring and compelling.